Hello, BookTube. I had planned uh, a whole day's barrage of videos for you, as usual. <laughs> I, set up, I set up the camera, and I have an endless amount of bookish things I want to talk about with you, or clipboard-related things. Uh, but my, my, a very ironclad deadline has cropped up out of nowhere. Not for myself, mind you. <laughs> Not for myself. My ducks are in order. But rather for someone else who seems to have uh, been caught by surprise by the fact that Thursday, today, is, and always has been, the day before Friday. <laughs> what? <laughs> you mean the day that comes after Thursday is for, for Friday? <laughs> so, <laughs> so, there is suddenly a ninja deadline. It's not mine, but it is a large amount of work for a large amount of money. Uh, and so the number of videos that I get to make talking to my imaginary booktube friends has to decrease, <laughs> unfortunately. Uh, which leaves us just a nub of things. I won't. There won't be any grand, nattering portmanteau videos, but there will be a couple of things for Thursday. For instance, Thursday is Poetry Thursday, uh, a practice that I have honored in the breach, but that I love and that I wish that more booktube would do, where we try to give poetry a little bit more of a place in the spotlight on booktube. We've all enjoyed some poems. Except maybe the recently returned David Murphy, uh, who made a video uh, on his own channel uh, early in the morning talking about how poetry always seemed to have a, to him a very poor ROI, <laughs> a very poor return on investment. It all seemed like so much jibber-jabbering when you could be reading the columns of NASDAQ in the Wall Street Journal. <laughs> But he recently got a poetry anthology, and uh, I don't know if it's coincidence or maybe he wa he saw it on my channel, but he recently got my favorite poetry anthology, which, with all due apologies to uh, the Oxford Book of English Verse, is this right here. World Poetry, an anthology of verse from antiquity to our time. The general editor is Clifton Fadiman, who wrote the Lifetime Reading Plan, and then you've got Catherine Washburn and John Molar as the working editors who assembled all of this. And the neat thing about it's a huge volume. And the neat thing about it is that it covers not only all time periods, but lots and lots of countries. So it's not your usual uh, English language, sort of English speaking world anthology. Instead, it covers all kinds of different poetry traditions. It's, it's an endless thing to wander in, uh, in terms of introducing you to whole poetic traditions you knew nothing about. Uh, and yet, despite that fact, <laughs> the poem that I'm going to pick today is from the classical world, which is extreme. Oh, none of you are paying attention to me anymore. <laughs> Oops. Whenever the bean gets extra cute in a video, all the attention goes out the window. She's feeling extremely mournful today because it's damp outside. Not necessarily raining, just damp. Damp is bad enough. <laughs> if she puts her little, her tiny little tootsies on the ground and they, they come back up wet, that's enough to make her down in the dumps. <laughs> but, uh, the, the poem that I've chosen today is from the ancient world. But in addition to ranging all across poetic traditions and all across the millennia, the editors of this volume have also chosen often unusual translations, sometimes even more pastiches than translations. They've gone out on a limb to do that. It's one of the, mo it's one of the most individualistic poetry anthologies that I've ever read. Uh, and the one uh, the, that I have chosen for you today is from the Rowan poet Virgil. Uh, this is called Death Plucks My Ear. And it goes like this. Death plucks my ear and says, Live, I am coming. And that was translated by Oliver Wendell Holmes. <laughs> and we'll, that will be our little... Uh, what's that I hear, book two? <laughs> that was too short. <laughs> Well, it was only two lines, wasn't it? Let's go to something else, shall we? Let's go to something else. Who can we find? Uh, okay, let's go to Sextus Propertius, uh, who is a, a terrific Roman poet. I have, there was a volume of his poetry that was done 40 years ago called Charm that is delightful, absolutely delightful, and modern, very much along the lines of what I'm talking about, a very modern kind of pastiche feel to bringing across these Roman poets. The, the problem with uh, Propertius or Tibullus or Catullus or even my beloved Horace is that they're so incredibly contextualized in their own poems, naming people by name, naming current events uh, without any kind of explanation, that often in translating them, the translator has the horrible choice between either translating it literally and having it mean nothing to any reader, or 
figuring out who those people were to the poet, not specifically, but what role they play in the poem, and finding modern equivalents for that. Uh, which the minute you set foot down that path, then you're going to be going down that path. And it's just going to, not just going to be the proper names that you start swapping out. It's going to be everything else. Uh, it's, it's very often in, in modernized translations of Catullus or Horace that television will be mentioned, that movie stars will be mentioned, for instance. Uh, and that's not pandering on the part of the translator. That's that they're, you're faced with a horrible dilemma. What do you do when the poet gets all topical? Do you get topical or do you merely translate the poet being topical? Uh, and we're going we're gonna to look at Propertius here and hope that we can avoid that problem. This is a chiller. <laughs> so it's a little longer than two lines. Let me see, I want to see if I can do it full tutor justice. Uh, this is called When Thou Must Home to Shades Underground, uh, which in, the, in the, the sort of the idiom, the parlance of Tudor English means when you must go home to shades underground. Home being, being the verb there. Uh, when thou must home to shades of underground, and there arrive new admired guests, the bounteous spirits do ingirt thee round, white Iope, blind Helen, and the rest, to hear the stories of thy finished love from, the, from that smooth tongue whose music hell can move. Then with us wilt thou speak of banqueting delights, of masks and revels which sweet youth did make, of tourneys and great challenges of knights, and all these triumphs for thy beauty's sake. When thou hast told these honors done to thee, then tell, O oh tell, how thou didst murder me. <laughs> uh, never you mind what the original is like in Propertius. It's, it's at least 60% like, <laughs> like that, but that is the genius of Thomas Campion, uh, a Tudor-era poet who transmuted that in not only uh, some of the idiom of his own day, jousting knights and whatnot, but also very much that thunderous Tudor scansion of his own day that is absolutely unmistakable. Uh, Thomas Campion was uh, blindingly talented. He was snub-nosed. He was broad-shouldered. He was appealingly stupid. Uh, he was gorgeous. Uh, and he died owing me money. <laughs> and this is, this is a poem about how a, a dandified, pretty-to-the-outside-world monster will lie even in the underworld, will, will even ingirt around, such, such great Tudor language, I-N-G-I-R-T, ingirt around with, with, with telltale ghosts who want to hear stories of the upper world, that even there, this ghost will lie. And make sure to remember the thing that got you here. <laughs> it's just just wonderful a little poetic chill for your poetic Tuesday, Thursday uh, that plus Oliver Wendell Holmes doing a little ditty by Virgil Virgil was not known for little ditties and that little ditty uh, is good it's good to remember on a, on a gray rainy Thursday it's good to remember live I am coming <laughs> but if that's not that's going to have to be enough poetry for now because a massive deadline presses <sighs> And not for me, <laughs> once again, I want to stress, despite having more deadlines than, uh, than uh, the person in question by a factor of 50, my ducks are in order. Instead, the de a deadline presses for someone else. Someone else who just happens to know that I am the fastest gun east of the Pecos. And so I have to cut down on my booktube videos. I'll do this, I'll do one other, and then we're just going to have to let it go, probably for today and tomorrow. Uh, to, to make the most of all of this time. Sorry about that, BookTube. But we have poetry for today, Poetry Thursday. If you have a BookTube channel, I urge you, pull down a piece of poetry and read it. Tell me what you think of it. Uh, but either way, uh, I'm going to wrap this up, and I'll be back. Thank you, BookTube.